Hey guys, it's Raul Velasquez here at the Next Level Experience Google Hangout, and today we have Patrick Combs, and he is a master storyteller. He's been on tour all over Europe. He has a track record of being 22 years as an inspirational speaker, winning multiple awards for storytelling techniques, and most important, he is a badass in telling stories. And when I'm talking about a badass telling stories, it's like he has that gift of being able to craft the story for you so you can create your brand based on the story because there's nothing more important in any product or service than the story behind it. That if you're in the, in the, in the business of selling a product or selling a service, nothing is more powerful than th telling a story behind the product or service. So thank you, Patrick, for coming to this hangout. I know that you're busy touring all over the country and and you were recently in Europe, I believe, and taking time for from your busy schedule to spend some time with me in this hangout. I mean, I really appreciate it. Hey, Raul, I really appreciate being here with you. I know you're a really busy guy, so I'm glad that we can intersect for the second time in a couple months. So I did just get back from using the power of story to entertain over uh, over uh, a couple thousand people live in theaters. I do a uh, one man comedic theater show where I'm on stage using one story to keep people on the edge of their seat, laughing, um, you know, putting their jaws to the floor. And I toured the UK and Ireland and it was just an epic, epic time. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. I mean, that's a one-man one show. I mean, that has to be one of the hardest things because acting in a production is hard enough, but being the only character in the theater, I mean, when there's no, like, we, you probably didn't see it, but we actually had some technical difficulties before this hangout, so we actually had to cut this, restart all over again so we could do this again, but you don't have the leisure in, in theater. <laughs> <laughs> that is great that you say it like that, brother, because when, you know, I call, I started off with inspirational speaking, I got 10 years under my belt, I got 1,000 performances under my belt, and I was named into the Hall of Fame for inspirational speaking. But with all that stage experience, at 35 years old, I went for my epic, epic, epic dream, and that was to walk on a theater stage, maybe have a double balcony theater sold out, and entertain that audience for two hours straight using nothing but story. And, and Raul, I mean, you just thrill me when you call attention to that because it is the greatest high wire I've ever walked in my life. If you are one inch this way on, on, you know, off, the, off the center of the wire, you're not going to have a very good show that night. You're going to lose your audience. They're going to lose attention. If you're one inch this way in the wrong direction on the power of story, then they're gone too, and you're going to walk off feeling like a goat. But if you nail the story, then the papers are going to write the next day that you're a master storyteller. The audience is going to be on the edge of their seat the entire time. They're going to stand. They're going to give you a five-minute standing ovation. And literally, you walk out feeling like a rock star because you use the power of story to just keep people entertained, engaged, uplifted, inspired. So I am fired up about it. I love it. And I agree with you totally. It is it is an environment now where your story is your brand. It is your existence. It is what either catches people's attention and builds brand loyalty and has people go, got to work with you, or it's what makes people go, yawn, I'm on my way. I They've forgotten you before they even get home. And that's true. I mean, you, you spoke in two of my events at the Next Level Experience. And every time you speak in my stage, I mean, the response for the audience is that you are transformational. That you have the gift of not just telling the story, but making it relevant. Making the story relevant and how does it apply to their lives. Because anybody who watches my videos knows that every video that I do... I create a lesson behind it because it's not just about telling the story and how cool the story is. It's about how do you make it relevant. And one of the things that I that I learned from you, Patrick, is to tell the story with details. The more detailed the story is, the better the perception for the other person to imagine what really happened. So, could you give us, you know, some tips of how to create a story better? If you know, if we have a business or we have a service that we could provide. What are the, some, some of the tips that you could give us in a way of how to create a better story when we communicate with our clients? Okay. Well, we have to, have, we have to talk about two different things, and, and it's probably best to talk about where stories go wrong first. So there are the sins of storytelling that almost everybody falls into these traps. And, you know, as I've shared from your stage before, you remember when I went on your stage and I said, look, I've spoken, I've lived my life on stages now for 20 years. 
I see dead speakers. <laughs> in the sixth sense, that kid sees dead people. I see dead speakers. I, I stand in rooms and I watch speakers. I'm just like, oh my God, like all the opportunities missed, all the gold undiscovered in this person's business in their life because they haven't learned the art of storytelling yet. So let's talk about some of the sins of storytelling so that people can kind of look through their own stories and say, am I committing that sin? Is it possible I am? Then we can talk about some of the, the secrets to storytelling, which we could go on all day about. Okay? So um, I want to use real examples. The, um, first of all, there's the power of story for individuals, and there's the power of story for business. You had a, a Google Hangout you know, expertise chat last week with um, Nick, who has a phenomenal <laughs> air aircraft company, right? This guy owns jets and planes and helicopters and a hangar, and he thrills and excites people. But still, that's easily lost if he doesn't have the right story to bring it out to people. If he doesn't have the right story to, to let people know that they ought to run to his building for one of the most thrilling and expansive um, experiences of their life, they might either not go flying ever in their life, or they might choose a different provider and Nick misses the business opportunity, right? So when I worked with Nick, Nick's challenge was, hey Patrick, I really need my website to tell the story of my business. I needed to tell the story in words, in text, and I needed to tell the story in video, but I don't know where to begin other than, you know, we're located in this area of New York and we have a staff that really cares and we're passionate about flying, right? But the problem is if you write, you know, you could even say, we've won this many awards, you know, our rates are great, you're going to love us, and you're going to love flying. But honestly, that's just blah, 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 blah. And if you get eyeballs to look at your page or you get somebody to watch that video, they're gone because every page in the world can say that. So where, does, so where did we begin looking in Nick's story um, for his story and what was the sin committed? I mean, the sin committed, usually, the first sin committed is nobody has taken their story serious enough. Yeah, yeah. People are messing around with hype, with lines to try and describe their product, with benefit points. That's great if you're living in 1980, maybe 1990. Do you know what I'm saying, Raul? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to do it. I remember 1990 when I was launching my speaking career. It was all about what's my topic and what are the benefits of my topic and what does it look like if I deliver it. Okay. But the sin there is, what's your story, my man? What do you mean, what's my story? So when it was Nick, it's like, okay, Nick, I'm, let's just, it's a given that you've, got an, that you've got a phenomenal airline service. But the sin being committed here is that we, we could intersect with you or your web page and never know what's at the heart of you and this experience. And, and why maybe the heart of your story makes me more compelled to want to walk through your doors and meet you than 50 other air places that'll take me for an airplane ride or teach me how to you know how to do that. So, the first question that, that we asked of Nick, that I asked of Nick as a coach was, Nick, just tell me your story. He's like, what story? Your story of that, how did you get to flying? How did flying come into your life? Where, do, and he's like, well, my, my father had a passion for flying. And that's where we began to uncover the gold in his story. So that's the first question. I, the first thing I'd ask someone who's learning on this is I'd say, first of all, are you using your story or are you using benefit points and marketing and description? If you're using benefit points and marketing and description, hey, shove it aside. You can use it later, but ask yourself the second question, which is, what's your story? Like, honestly, like, Let's say we're at Starbucks and I don't give a shit about your business. I just want to know you as a person and how you come to, came to be where you are in life doing this thing that you care about. Right. One of the things that comes through me is that when I started working with you and 
I think I, I hired you after the second Next Level Experience event. And what you got out of me was my real story. You know, because as a speaker, we tend to want to just give you the, the success story. want to give you the, my successes. You want to give you the, the stuff that I've ac accomplished. But when the reality is that you connect with people more in your failures. You connect with people when you were at your darkest. So you were able to get that part out of me of what's my story of struggle, you know, how I came to this country, how I was able to overcome failing in real estate, how I was able to overcome my drinking every single night because I was dealing with stress, how I was able to overcome all those obstacles to get where I am right now. And that's the part that when people come to my event, I mean, they get that emotion that my story is my truth. Yes, we're both in the business, and I'm sure anybody watching this Google Hangout, there's just a great probability that you're in the same business that Raul are in. We're in the business of transforming lives, of inspiring people, of helping people move from here to there. And there's from here to there is always an obstacle. That's what we're doing. We're in the business of helping people get through obstacles and do something that they're madly passionate about doing. Okay? But we're also in the business, that puts us in the business of needing to build no like, and trust with people. Okay? Now, the fastest way to know, like, and trust Raul, you, so the fastest, sometimes talking to the, the, the camera audience, you know, so the fastest way to know, like, and trust me is to get to know my story. You might think right now, like, you might hear me talking to this thing, who is this blowhard? You know, like, okay, well, let me engage you with, tell you my story a little bit. And this is reflected on my webpage, so I'll direct you to my webpage later, and you can just read the way I, I want people to come to know me as a speaker in case they're considering hiring me to come in and motivate their audience. The first thing I want them to know really early on is I was born in a trailer house. I was raised in a trailer house. Our trailer house had a dirt yard around it, and our trailer house had these rickety stairs. Now, does that tell you something more about me? Tells you a lot more about me. Tells you that whatever success I have in life, I probably earned. I was raised by a single parent. That's part of my story. My father didn't want kids. In other words, he didn't want me. He said, whoa, I'm leaving. And he left when I was one, so I was raised with no father. And my mother became suicidal when I was a teenager. That's the beginning of getting to know me. So why do I care about positivity? Why am I, what, where, where do I come from when I sit down with a client and say, I want to help you overcome obstacles? I come from a trailer house and a single parent who was working so hard in her life that it would depress her severely. That's where I come from. That's my roots for looking at the world. And that gave me tremendous gifts of positivity, of overcoming everything, of wanting to share everything I know with other people to give everybody a lift in life. It's the power of story. And, and that's the cool thing about the power of story that, you know, when you look at your successes, I mean, you, you are a renowned speaker, you won multiple awards, but knowing where you came from, knowing that story and, and the way you tell it is so detailed that brings people back into that moment and place and expresses that emotion and that feeling that people speak. Like, you know, I got a couple of comments this week from people who I have never met in my life through Facebook. And those little stories that I tell in my video, a couple people have told me that I speak to their souls. You know, and, and that really hit me and it, and it got to me. I'm present to it that it's not just about creating a story, but it is speaking authentically about what's going on in your life. And when you could get to the point that you could speak to people's souls through your story, that's when the transformation happens. So well said, Raul. And I would, and I would, you know, add a, add some icing on top of that to punctuate that point, which is, from my 22 years of experience in two different mediums of storytelling, inspirational speaking, and comedic performing, I would tell you, you can't touch someone's soul unless you're using story. Story is the only art form on the planet, the only communication methodology there is on the planet that will connect with someone's soul. All the other stuff fails to work. Now, you've highlighted one of the secrets to storytelling, which is detail. So when I coach with people, there are these different layers. We'll coach with the secrets of success. And when we're getting right down to one of those layers, it is, let's get the details out. 
So yeah, imagine the difference if when I was sharing myself through my bio, my written bio, when you go to my web page, you're going to see when you read about me, it says I was born in a trailer house with rickety steps and a dirt yard. I chose two, three details. I could have just said, hey, I was raised poor. Okay? But it's but that's not half as you know, soul to soul. That doesn't make anywhere near the same connection as when I tell people in detail, trailer house, rickety steps, dirt yard. You have a picture now? Yeah. Now, what I find fascinating, because look, I, and I, I've worked 22 years to figure out how do I tell, how do, how do we tell a story in our bios, how do we tell it in our marketing materials, and how do we tell it on our stories from stage? That's all I focused on for 22 years. Now look at my bio, I think it's very reflective of what I've learned about that. Now when I move past the, okay, this is where I come from, so you can trust that I've been there, I move into describing my accomplishments. Now the old me a long time ago would have said, Patrick's a Hall of Fame, uh, I would have just went, went right to it, bro, I just would have went, Patrick's a Hall of Fame inspirational speaker, Patrick's clients include Visa, Shell, Motorola, da da da, Patrick's been on with Barbara Walters, Patrick's been on with, you know, Patrick's been in the New York Times. But do you hear it? Because even saying it like that, I can hear it. Can you hear people tuning out? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear people go, shut up? Who cares about you? Can you hear that? Yeah. Could you feel it? The more I boast, that's called the sin of hype. That's called the sin of vanity in storytelling. And it's all over people's marketing messages. Now, what, I want to show you an amazing secret adjustment, okay? I was going to pop it open and just read it, but I'll estimate it for you because you'll read it yourself on my bio. Here's how it really goes. Now, when I want to describe myself as a speaker and my accomplishments, it goes like this. Patrick began his career at, 22, at 26 years old, working from a desk made of milk crates and a board that he found in the alley. He went into $45,000 of credit card debt with no safety net in the first three years trying to establish himself as a motivational speaker. By his fifth year in business, he had a half a million dollar sponsorship from Visa. He had spoken at 300 different universities around the country. He's now in the Hall of Fame today. Anything, do you, do, you hear, do you feel the difference? What was it like for you? What's the difference, Raul? Yeah, the difference is that you didn't start with going through your journey. And yeah. because you're taking them in that journey, they go with you. Yeah, because people will not, people will not like your accomplishments until they understand your struggle. Yeah. That's part of the secret to storytelling. Is include your struggle. As a matter of fact, put your struggle first because we're build, trying to build no like and trust. We're trying to build, hey, follow me. My story has, I'm going to share, I've lived great meaning and I want to share great meaning with you. I've learned secrets to success the hard way. I want to share them with you. So the greatest stories in the world always include struggle. So one of the things I wanted to describe my theater career. Let's just double down because you're going to read this for yourself after this. You're going to go, oh my God, like secret to story. So when it comes to my theater career, we know the answer now. Should I just begin with Patrick was selected as the funniest new show in America by HBO. Patrick's played off-Broadway. He's played London. He's played theaters all over the world, sold out audiences. Or is it better to begin with the truth, with the struggle? At 33 years old, at 35 years old, Patrick set out to accomplish what for him was a completely, seemingly almost impossible wild dream, to be a comedic theater performer. And for the first year, he failed miserably, and he suffered uh, criticism and people telling him he was no good. And then afterwards, I described the breakthrough. And people can respect it and they can go, yeah, yeah, this is the kind of guy we want to bring in and motivate people from our stages because this guy knows hardship. This guy knows struggle, but he knows how to get through it 
and he knows how to, you know, his story, it's the power of my story, it's the power of my brand. So you're getting a sense now of what is my brand as a, as a speaker. My brand is overcome everything. My brand is, is courage in the face of all odds. My brand is go for it. My brand is you can do it. You know what I mean? But my brand comes out through my story, just through the story told in my bio. You know, that's a, an amazing thing that you said is the truth because you and I have been around many speakers and I don't know about you, but I could always tell from, a, from the audience where the speaker is telling the truth or, or he is manufacturing his story mm -hmm. because there's no way really that you could create an emotion through a story that you're pretending. So the truth whatever the truth is, whatever you're experiencing, your, your hardship, that has to be the truth. And sometimes we sugarcoat our stories so much because we don't want to show that dark part. Like for you know, many years, I, I wanted to show only my successes, only my accomplishments, all my, the things that I've done because I thought that's the way that people relate to me. But the moment that I got honest and real with myself and I started sharing my, my truth, then everything changed. The stories got better. The impact was better. I mean, that, that being real is probably one of the key things of creating a story, wouldn't you say? Ah, it's one of the major secrets to storytelling. And one of the major sins to storytelling is glossing over the truth in order to, in order to appear more than you are. Um, I, you know, the way I really like to phrase it, it's, it's bullshitting. Yeah. You know? Um... And some people do it, you know, in a way that's more obvious than others. But in, but the way that showed up in in my in my journey to success in speaking first, where it showed up first is, I was going on stages, trying out all kinds of different material, and the more I told the truth, the more I realized my audience was becoming completely engaged and completely on fire. You know, I remember the first time I I set my toe in the water, and it was telling a story about how. You know, I, I was talking to college students about following their passion. I was telling the story about how I succeeded to get a great job right after college, which was incredibly relevant to them, you know, because they were wondering, like, how am I going to get a great job? But where I arrived with that message in the end, you know, because starting with, hey, I did these success moves. If you do these success moves, it really pays off. That was the first level. But when I learned the power of story in that, for instance, by the time I was there, it sounded more like, so I was full of insecurity. I couldn't have been more insecure. I was completely nervous. I, I felt like they'll never pick me. I picked up the phone. I was so freaking nervous. I was pacing on when I'm trying to get a job with this guy, and, and I pace too far from the wall, and it jerks the cord out the phone out of my hand, and the phone goes flying and bouncing across the floor. It hits the metal trash can, <laughs> makes the worst sound ever, and I'm like, I just lost that freaking job, <laughs> you know. And now my audience is with me, and they're like, that's how I'd feel if I picked up the phone and tried to get a job at Levi Strauss and Company. You know? So it was, it was the truth in them going, I'm insecure and, and full of self-doubt when I really want my dreams come true. I do stupid things like drop the phone. Now we're talking. Now we're bonding. Now we're together and connected soul to soul, right? I mean, and then that, Rob, that was the key, man. That was the key. When you were, you were teaching me how to engage with the crowd was being that authentic part of you that, you know, you make mistakes. You make mistakes. You act, you know, you act like an idiot sometimes and just engage in that. In the most, in the most, uh, you know, the, the two high, the, where truth has taken me in three different places, um, each one a different example. First of all, the truth took me to, uh, I was talking to audiences, I was well into my speaking career, 10 years into it, and I had a lot of stage presence and ability from the stage. So I appeared to be born out of the womb, capable of holding an audience, you know, in the, you know, for, for the length of time required and taking them where I wanted to. I, and I knew that that was becoming a problem. And I knew that it was, that, that I was losing the ability to say to my audience, I started off horrible. I was horrible for the first year. People were calling me an egghead halfway through the speech and walking out, you know. I was, I, was, I was doing the walk of shame home after speaking. I was just terrible. But I began to see this look on my audience's faces when I was, you know, I was already 700 gigs in or something. And people would just look and you could just see it on their face like, you are never terrible like I'd be terrible. So one of the greatest truth-telling moves I've ever done, I went to my garage, Raul. 
I found a tape from the first year of speaking, this old VHS tape, and I converted it digital. And I walked out on stage and I said, I can see by your faces that you don't believe that I was terrible. I'm about to show you something that is cringeworthy. That, um, that uh, I, while you're watching it, I will be sweating and turning red. It's so still embarrassing to me. Um, but I want to show it to you because you have to understand something. When you start your speaking career, I promise you, you'll be infinitely better than, <laughs> than the talent level I started mine with. And Raul will I play this tape, and it does when I watch it. Have you ever seen a tape of yourself that just makes you just, you just sweat and you turn red and you just, your brain is screaming like, turn it off, that can't be true, I can't be that nerdy looking, I can't be that awful, like, Somebody just pulled a plug on that guy, you know, and shove him in a trash can. And I, and the first time I ever showed it to my audience, people had no idea what they were about to see. And there were shrieks in the audience, and people covered their eyes. Some people covered their eyes. They were like, oh my God, I can't bear this. This guy is such a loser in this video. And I'm actually wearing a woman's jacket because I couldn't afford a man's jacket at the time, so I borrowed my girlfriend's blazer. And I stop the video and I point that out. I go, do you see the buttons are on the woman's side? Like, It's awful. Now, before I showed that video, I showed it to my wife at the time, and I said, do you think I should show this video? And she said, never. No, never show that video to your audience, she said, Patrick, because that undermine, undermines it every bit of credibility you have like you just need to bury that video <laughs> it's it's truly embarrassing I go it is isn't it I go I've got to show it to people and so although people were hiding their eyes they were shrieking that was the first keynote I ever did that if you will had an epic bond with audiences because more than any other talk I'd given at that point, people wanted to rush to me after the stage and learn anything I knew. They completely trusted that I was the guy that could, if I could be that bad, but I could be on them, in front of them on a stage, you know, uh, being better years later, they completely trusted me in the realm of speaking. They knew now, like, oh, you're like me. Detail, detail, truth, truth, right? That's not glossing over the truth. That's like, I'm going to show you the rawest truth possible, the embarrassing, ugly, <laughs> oh my God, cringeworthy truth. Mm. People dig it. It's a great story. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, I think that how this applies to business owners is that you need to show where your company has come from. You need to show with the product how long the journey has been since you you launched your product, and um, and that's you know one of the things that you do is you help them create a story behind what they do, because people buy the emotion behind the product. I mean, look at you know the companies like Zappos, for example. When I met Tony Shea, the CEO of Zappos, he has a culture, he has a story, he actually has a whole department about telling the story how the company started. And that people are working for him not because of the money, but because of the culture. I mean, story transcends people to the point that they will work for you because of what your story is, of who you are through your story. So, how are you helping business owners right now, Patrick, in creating that story? And how how has that helped them in the bottom line? Because I know a lot of people looking and say, "Okay, great, story is great, but I'm not a speaker. I'm not there to transform people's lives. How does this impact the bottom line in my company?" So I'm on location today in Los Angeles. I'm working with my brand management team, and we're doing a complete makeover of my brand materials. And so um, in, the, in the next room over here, we're at a uh, creative sort of incubator studio. Um, the guy working on my site said, hey, I need a description of your software company, or which I have a software company, and we help people take action on their dreams. It's called Mike. So here, the way I help my own company is the way I help other companies. So I could describe that software company like this. I could say, Might is a software is the is a revolutionary soft, software platform that helps people through accountability and productivity take great action on a daily basis 
on their ambitions and their dreams. It might serve entrepreneurs all over the globe. Okay? But there's no story there, right? So that can get lost, that will get lost in, the, in all this overwhelming media that we're faced with every, every day. But that's the kind of paragraph that most business owners will turn in. It's a good, solid description of exactly what you do. It paints a picture of success. It paints a picture of business. It tells you what it does, right? So how do you bring story to that? Two different ways. You know, One way is, so starting in, in late 2010, I got together with my business partner and working in coffee houses on napkins, we scribbled an idea that we thought could change the world. If possibly we got it right. We took only $10,000 and attempted to build a software company that was worth millions with only 10000 to start with. We made a hell of a lot of mistakes, but we did just enough right to create a global platform and community now of action takers all over the world who are crushing it with our system that's been called revolutionary, our system called might. Much better story. Much better story. Much better story, right? So I help owners, and, but it's it's and it's real. And how did we, so? How did we get there? We go, okay, that's great. I know what you have now. I get it. But remember what we said earlier at the talk, at the start of this talk, where well, the same question that I asked Nick. But Nick, like, how did you get here? Where did it begin? And the answer is well. Working in coffee shops with napkins with an insane idea and very little money to do what we needed to do. Okay. So if you're a business owner and you're you're asking yourself to write this, like, yeah, I know marketing school and MBAs and everybody around us, you know, uh, is is often stuck a couple decades ago. Maybe it was even last decade. I don't. I mean, it's changed very recently with just really good solid copy to describe what you do and what the benefits are. But it doesn't work anymore. It adds up to a who cares, and I'm not going to read that. So in order to win this story war, as a business owner, what you need to do now, and it will create tremendous value for you, tremendous, it will increase your bottom line by tremendous amounts of money, because people will do more, more people will do more business with you, and it creates enormous loyalty, is tell people a story Tell people the real story that shows off why you got involved with it, how you had to, the risks you had to take to create it, the mission you were on, and a story that tells and mean that creates meaning because people want meaning in the world. People are tired of lives that have no meaning, that are just based on dollars or you know, just based on the later latest consumer fad or just based on getting their needs met. Inspire people with your story. What's inspiring about that little tiny story I told you? What's inspiring about the story behind Might is, is that all of us, I mean all of us have something inside us that goes, yeah, making up shit in a coffee house that we think could better the world against all odds. That's fucking meaning, excuse me. That's meaningful. That's meaningful. I want a little meaning in my life. So I might look at these guys' service just because I want to be around people like that. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what, you know, creating a story, or I should say having the story, sometimes people have that story and this empowers them. You know, how did I use that storytelling and why did I ask you to come to the next level experience uh, and the last couple of events that I've had is because I believe that the story that you create in your lives you could change people's lives by creating your story. How do you use your story to inspire as opposed to using your story to prevent you from moving forward? You know, and, and one of the things that we did the Next Level Experience with you is creating that storytelling because when I started the event, I used personal development and business development and combined them together to create an explosion of growth. And I started the event by asking people, what's your story? Who's telling the story in your head? 
are you the director or are you just the actor in your story? And we're able to break through people's stories and rewrite the story. And that's when you came in because you gave an opportunity to rewrite the story to empower and inspire people and turn that story of being you know, the underdog and turn that story of being broke and turn that story of being cheated on to an empowering story that serves the business. Because at the end of the day, people buy you. They don't buy your product. People buy you. And if you connect them with that emotion, don't connect an emotion and have that transformation on people's lives. Your business, I mean, I have I get this all the time. People are like, I don't know what you do, Raul, but I want to do business with you. Like, I love your passion, I love your energy. And it's just because I believe that what you exude will be the energy that transmits with people and the values and exchange of what you could bring to their, their lives. So in an event, I mean, can you tell them a little bit about, about what you experience at the next level experience? Yeah, well, you started exactly where you, you know, the, the most recent one that was in that extraordinary location. Of, do you give that location out or is that still secret? Oh, that's, that's secret. That's very good. Okay, good, good. Well, let me just say, extraordinary location, just a magnificent, historic, you know, Raul used the building itself as part of the story, which was amazing because we were all just like, whoa, where are we? This is amazing. And so he used environment. Like in my theater show, I use lights and staging and, and whatever I decorate the stage with in order to create the first part of the story, which is what environment are we telling the story in? So I really admired that move, Raul, the next level experiences. I think master event designers know how important the design in the environment of the room in and of itself is. But you don't see many people wielding that kind of uh, skill set. So kudos to you on that. And yeah, you know, you made this brilliant choice, um, which was to say, look, at the heart of people's possibility is the story they're telling themselves. And, and you and I are both guys. Uh, you did a brilliant job you know, at acknowledging that everybody could tell a better story about themselves. They could, they could literally be the director of their own movie. I remember you saying it like this and saying, so what kind of movie do I want to make here? Shall I make a comedy? Shall I make a tragedy? Shall I make a drama? How does my movie end? Does it end well? Does it end with me in a pity party? You know, but I thought the, you know, the way that setup was really fantastic for letting everybody in that audience, and I saw them do it, reflect and go, oh, I am the writer of my story. I can be the director of my story. And I can choose how the story of my life looks, basically, when I watch it and when other people watch it. So what's this story going to be? Um, this just is kind of a random intersect, but you know, as we're standing in this creative uh, incubator studio here, um, one of the guys that's heading up my brand looks out the window and he points this woman across the street and he's like, that is one of Hollywood's now major new directors because she just got in charge of directing an epic film. She's best friends with Russell Brand and everybody you know in the movie business. Like That woman is crushing it. And I just, she just came back to me randomly right here because that was 10 minutes before the call and she's directing a movie. And so just like you say, great. We really do that in life. We really direct the movie of our life. Now I decided early on, you reminded me, Raul, that I decided early on, I wanted a movie that of my life to be a story of great passion, extraordinary adventure, and service. And if I could get my movie to you know to be like, wow man, that's a life of passion, that's a life of service, that's a life of adventure then I'm in an excellent movie <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, what's your, what's your movie? What's your story? Um, you've probably been telling yourself a different story than the one you would design if, if you were given a budget to have it any way you want. Yeah. One of the things that I like about you know, having the events and, and the target audience for my events are people who've been through personal development. And I always get these questions like, Raul, like I've been to the best personal development events in the world. Like I've been with Tony Robbins, with uh, you know Deepak Chopra. I've been to Millionaire Minds everywhere. What can you possibly teach me at the next level experience? I get this all the time. What can you? What can I possibly learn at the next level experience? I remember this coming to me when I look at these people in the eye and say, "I'm not gonna teach you shit. <laughs> I'm gonna help you remember." 
I'm going to help you remember who you are. And by creating a story, you're actually going to be able to remember the true story, the real story behind the bullshit story that you've been telling yourself. How do you implement that into marketing? How do you implement that into your business? That is when marketing goes to a whole different level. The authentic, the real you, the real badass that's inside of you guiding that marketing strategy. And that's the reason that you, know, you, you came in on board in the next level experience as a speaker is because I truly believe that you have the gift of bringing that structure to people's lives. Well, your next level events, you know, that calls out the second thing I was going to say about your next level events is there's a, there's a method to what you do at those events. And I've, you and I have discussed it behind the scenes, and you, you reference it on the stage. You're transparent about it on the stage. But it's, it's that you created these events with, this, with one commitment, which is you refuse to be another seminar that people would just learn stuff from and then go away and not do anything with it. And so your event design from the start has been forget about uh, you needing to know something else that's going to change your life. You already know. So everything about your event is designed to have people integrate it right in and there and just feel a pop from it that gets them past that block. Whatever theirs was. I mean, I, I, I saw you do it on the stage with a couple people, you know, where until they had that pop and they got it, it was drama on the stage and it was intense and cool. When she got it, she just burst into tears, and she's like, oh, my God, I've been telling myself a story that holds me back. That was an unbelievable, cool moment. So, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, that was really cool. That was uh, an intervention that we did in the, in the stage, but that's awesome, man, and I appreciate uh, you. John Cleese was – back to uh, – thanks, Ro. Um, sorry to step on your toes there. I was watching The Daily Show last night, and John, uh, John Stewart was interviewing John Cleese, the master comedian. And John Cleese was on because he's just written his new um, memoir or his autobiography. And there was this really great moment where John Stewart says, what was it like to write your, the story of your life? Um, and he said, you know, he said it was fantastic. But I didn't do it until I was sitting across from Michael Caine. I was having lunch with Michael Caine. So there's John Cleese and Michael Caine having lunch somewhere, which would have been cool. And Michael Caine had just finished his, the story of his life. And so Cleese asked him and said, so is it worth it? Should I do it? And he said, it was Michael Caine that said, you have to do it. You have to write the story of your life. Because when you go back to write the story of your life, you rediscover all of these moments in your life that were getting lost that have extraordinary meaning. Mm. And that's what you and I are talking about. You know, at the level at which the power of, of looking into your own story can change your life. Because there are two conversations we've been having on this hangout, if people haven't noticed. One is, you know, the first one we surface is, look, you can be coached to tell a better story, um, to find a better story and tell it better. And if you do that, there are enormous business gains, whether you're an individual or you're a business, because the best stories win. When people are looking for a speaker, if they look at five different websites, the best story gets hired, okay? Whether that story is being told on video or it's being told in text or a combination of both. And the same goes for whatever product you sell, okay? Somebody's going to look at all kinds of business plays and opportunities that day, and the best story's going to win. And I, I promise you, because I see dead speakers and bad stories, I promise you, your story could benefit from improvement. Okay? Do it. It's an extraordinary investment in your business. But the second thing that we started talking about about 10 minutes ago is there's, there's not only financial gold in looking into the story of your business or the story of your life, but there's personal goal. There's personal goal. There's the ability to take a constructive, reflective, disciplined look back and find the extraordinary meaning in the challenges that you faced, 
in the difficulties that you've walked through, in the nightmares that you've suffered, in the insecurities that you've had chained to your leg, and, and you know, in the hang-ups that have that have unconsciously stopped you over and over. Will we look back and really take our our own life story seriously and passionately that we miss the opportunities to learn that learn where our story's been holding us back and where our story's been trying to enable us to go big. And as one example, I'll tell you, a client named Ted came to me, Ted McGrath, and he said, I want to tell my story from stage. He goes, I tell it in small bits in inspirational speaking now, but he goes, I, I really want to tell my story. And so we worked together extensively for a long time, learning his story. Now, isn't that fascinating that he lived his story? And yet, we looked for months through his personal, what he lived, and we found the real story, hmm. moments in him looking through his own life story, that he cried, that he broke through, that he reached ex exhilaration, and I can't tell you how he went up. And this is according to him. Because he took the time and he finally fell in love with his own story at the level which he would examine it, he would find out what it meant. And that's what I mean when I say there's gold in your life story because first you'll find out what it means, what your life has meant. There is a through line in your life where life has been trying to tell you something, a master lesson plus a lot of sub lessons. But the only way you get that master lesson, I, I have lived this, is when you have this diligence in you that says, my story is important. Life is telling me something through all these experiences I have. What is life trying to whisper? to me something here life is trying to whisper to you your your wisdom that's why it put you on this unique path so every now and then the storytellers go oh my god oh my god I I can't believe what I just learned from looking at my story like I'm free and you are you're free your story will set you free I get passionate about it but there's, there's gold in your story so of empowerment. What Raul and I are sharing with you is you make more money because people want to do more business with you. Absolutely, man. That is that is the key is the storytelling will get you where you want to be because once you start telling the real story, once you become authentic and real about where you are and who you are, your business, your relationships, everything around you is going to come real. You know, we come, you know, one of the events that I put on and I, I talk about how we wear masks all the time. And we wear masks constantly because the fact is we don't want people to see the real us. But the moment that you take the mask off and you become real and you tell your real story, I tell you nothing is as important as you becoming real with who you are. People will come to you and say, like, what have you done? What transformation have you been through? Because I see who you truly are. And it's just the illusion that, you know, we have to be better off than we are. So I thank you, Patrick, for taking your time. I don't want to take too much of your time. I know that we scheduled for 45 minutes here, but could you tell us about how we get a hold of you? Can, can you give us your website? Yeah, my website is patrickcombs.com. So simple enough right there, patrickcombs.com. And, and anyone who's looking to create a better story or create a brand around your story, you know, I'll vouch for Patrick because he's helped me tremendously in my storytelling. And I look forward, anybody who's watching this video want to know more about him, just click on the link, go to his website, send me a message on Facebook. You'll find a way to send me a message. And uh, I just want to give people a really clear picture of how that process works. Okay. Uh, uh, you send me a message and you say, hey, I'm interested in discovering my story, I'm interested in telling my story better, and you tell me if it's the story of your business or if it's the story of you. And then what, what I respond with is, great, well let's set up a time and we'll do a free consultation coaching call. And on that first call, I will just give you value. I will just pour forth, or I will call some of your story forward as best you can tell it, and then I will, I will instantly tell you what I know and help you make that story better so you leave with value. But at the end of that call, I'll tell you your options 
for engaging me as your coach on an ongoing basis for the amount of time that I would prescribe, you know, will make an enormous difference in your business. Awesome. Awesome. It'll be the best investment that you'll make in yourself. So thank you, Patrick. I appreciate it. For you guys, proximity is power. Get around people that will push you and pull you to where you want to be. And learn it, live it, and experience it. Love life.